Hello, I'm Mort Kern here at the University of California, Irvine, and we're going to be doing a cardiac catheterization, possible angioplasty, and fractional flow reserve assessment. I'm going to show you the basics of FFR, and I'm going to show you the setup of how we uh, do all the different steps to have an accurate and uh, reliable fractional flow reserve measurement. Okay, stop there. Here's our FFR wire, which has been passed to us out of the uh, package. Uh, the hoop, we like to keep the wire in the hoop. You have your torque tool and your wire connector, which goes to the PIM uh, uh, interface. So the signal will come through the wire, through the PIM to the interface. Now I like to keep everything in the hoop most of the time. I flush the wire. And this is the prestige wire we're using today. Okay, so the wire is flush. Now I'm going to pass off my connector. I'm going to keep everything free of liquid to my associate here. Thank you, Russell. And of course, we have a standard angioplasty wire introducer and torque tool extra. The PIM has been plugged in and the wire is zeroing. I like to set the wire at the same level as the guide catheter pressure and zero them both. And the reason we do this is so that we don't have a big difference in the zero offsets that the machine will have to adjust for. So are we zeroed? Thank you. Thank you. AO's up. And now we'll just check the wire signal. And there's the wire signal on the FFR. Okay. Next step will be to introduce the wire and then normalize to the aortic pressure. So I'm going to do that now. Raina, you might want to come and assist me here in case I get things messy. Okay, so I like to keep the hoop handy in case I want to go back to it for some reason. The wire comes in a straight configuration. Can you see this? This is straight configuration, yes. And the pressure, the pressure transducer is right here, right there. Now I'm going to put it into the needle introducer, I mean the, the wire introducer, needle, and I'm going to put a, just a gentle curve, any curve that the angioplasty doctors like. So when we introduce the wire, when we introduce the wire, we use our wire introducer. Now to get an accurate measurement, we want to take the wire, the wire introducer out, okay, and then tighten the two borst back up. This makes for a good pressure seal and an accurate pressure measurement. In addition, we should, if we are using smaller than six French guide catheters, like five or even a four, we must flush with saline. The transmission of pressure through a six French is good and can be maintained with contrast. Often, we'll decide to flush it out with saline to get even a better fidelity pressure. I'm going to introduce the wire through our Y connector. No, that's fine. So we're going to be introducing the wire. And I'm going to put it just in the, in the opening of the guide catheter here in just a second. So the position of the wire will be just, in this case, since the guide catheter is seated, I'm just going to exit the guide catheter a little bit. We are going to normalize the guide wire pressure with the guide catheter pressure. And it doesn't matter exactly where the transducer is, but Traditionally, it's been at the tip of the guide, but it could be in the guide or it could even be free in the aorta for certain circumstances. I'm going to take the needle introducer out and I'm going to lock down my Y connector. Okay, let's go again. Normalize, please. Okay, now I'm going to pass the wire down the artery of interest. We back our uh, needle introducer out. Now we're ready to measure FFR. So we see our baseline measurements. This is only a resting ratio. It's never called FFR at rest. It's just called resting ratio. Now please turn on the adenosine. Put your hands in the air and step away from the table. Not too far. So our IV adenosine is again 140 mics per kilogram per minute run in through an infusion pump to a very uh, generous forearm vein. 
we're going to see the effect of adenosine by a slight increase in heart rate and a slight drop in blood pressure. We're going to let it run for two minutes. Then we're going to start recording. We're gonna actually going to record our FFR beginning probably about one minute. And we're going to go through two. So adenosine's on. The benefit of this IV infusion technique now is that I can make a pullback recording during hyperemia, which we will do. So if there are multiple areas in this vessel, this method. Now here's our drop in pressure and increase in heart rate. So we know the adenosine is working. You're measuring, right? Okay, that's off. Start again. Okay, so measuring now. FFR is now 0.88, which is a nice normal value. We're going to pull this wire back. It's stable for now for 15, 30 seconds. Okay, huh? Yeah, I'm going to pull the pressure wire back going from distal to proximal now on hyperemia. So this would be the method of doing a pullback. And I'm looking to see any changes in FFR. And we're at 93 now back in our proximal segment. So there was a slight decrease. Okay, turn the adenosine off. Thank you. And we are back to checking our proximal signal, which is normalized. Okay, so here is our recheck of our normalized and matching aortic and distal pressure. Carmen, all done.